So for the hydroboration of alkenes, you'll need BH3THF, so BH3, THF, this part is the THF part. Then you'll need H2O2 and NaOH, or halogens. And it'll be a syn addition and anti-Markovnikov. So the first thing is the alkene, right? It will, the double bond um, will attack the BH3. And so um, the bond that connects BH3 and THF will break off and it will form a syn addition, right? So um, this bond will attack, attach to the hydrogen and this bond will attach to the BH2. So that's why both of these are wedges because they attached and notice how this methyl gets shifted inward. So next, you add H2O2 and NaOH. Um, H2O2 gets rid of the BH2, and then Na NaOH, the OH forms the alcohol. Now let's go into the mechanism of what this exactly does to make this. So uh, first of all, you, you can have your bromine, right? Your bromine will form uh, three R groups. And so the R group will be this part, right? Because your bromine is right there and it forms this entire thing is the R group. So when you put H2O2 in NaOH, it ends up forming this structure, right? But how does it form this structure? So to find that, um, first of all, you'll need to look at H2O2. So this is H2O2, right? Um, so, and this is the reaction between H2O2, so two O's and two H's, and NaOH, so the OH part, OH minus. OH minus comes along, attacks the hydrogen, and then that that bond, right, it gives electrons to the oxygen, so it, it creates a negative charge on the oxygen, and it forms, since OH attacks the hydrogen, it forms water. So next thing, what happens is this, since it's a negative charge, it will attack this bromine structure, right? It will attack this structure, and the R group, remember, is this structure, the entire um, cyclohexane, so it will attack this bromine right here and form a form a bond to the bromine. Now what the what happens here is a the R will shift over. It the R will shift over to the oxygen right here and then um the OH the electrons here will come off and go to the oxygen and therefore the R will be stuck on the O. So next what happens is um uh, this happens two more times to form this structure, right? Because the R shifted over, and then that keeps happening until you have this, where all three of them is where a oxygen is between the R. Now what happens is OH- minus can come and attack the boron, right? It'll come and attack the boron. It will form four bonds, right, with a negative charge on boron. And now what will happen is boron's more stable with uh, three bonds, right? So it will kick off this bond and um, it will kick off this bond and the electrons will go to the oxygen. So then you have RO minus and then with water, uh, what will happen is it will become ROH um, because uh, water will give one of its hydrogens to this structure. And ROH is the same as this, the structure we saw in the beginning where it's OH, right? So OH is attached to the R group, which was the cyclohexane. Um, so honestly, the mechanism is, it's uh, useful to understand, but practically it's easier to uh, just memorize that um, BH2, BH2, NH3 will cause the BH2 to, uh, H2O2 will just cleave off the BH2 and OH will form right here because even though it's interesting to know about the entire mechanism, it, at the end of the day, it's simply easier just to memorize that H2O2 gets rid of BH2 and OH forms right here. So that's just my take on it, and um, I hope all of this helped, and thanks for watching.